the Drosophila embryo. It's, uh, there are about 100 cells in this direction. We can see all the cells look initially pretty much the same. So most of these early morphological changes that are happening must, are first of all, very rapid. And if we're going to explain them, we have to explain them in terms of uh, the way cells adhere to each other and the way that they generate forces on each other through uh, acting myas inside a skeleton. Uh, in biology, cells, biological processes are typically noisy. Biological matter is a very soft matter. Yet, uh, embryonic development is very precise, very reproducible, robust. How is this possible? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I knew. I mean, you know, based, and that's what we're going to be yeah. talking about, I yeah. guess. I think it's always true that when you don't know what's going on, things can look a lot more noisy yeah. than when you suddenly, when you understand what's going on. That's one possibility. The other interesting possibility though, and I honestly don't know which of these is the right one, is that somehow noise through some peculiar mathematics adds up to not be noise anymore. So I, I don't know where to put my money on this bet. I know that Historically, the most powerful thing we've done in the past 20 years is believed in the first model. Uh, but I think it, it is fun to entertain another possibility. Yeah. From, from the very famous EMBL experiments there, for yeah. which you received the Nobel Prize in, in Heidelberg, um, you move to a more quantitative analysis yeah. of biological processes. And, can you explain us why it is important to understand quantitatively some biological uh, processes? I think one of the, th what I find attractive about quantitative approaches is that you, that the first rigorous step in translating a process into math. And Math, mathing something out is probably the most rigorous way of testing how you think. And in a way, numbers then is like genetics in that they're both have this powerful ability to test your preconceptions. Mm -hmm. When you measure something, you don't really know what the number is going to be until you get the number out. And when you do a genetic experiment, you don't really know what mutants you're going to get until you get the, until the mutants come out. You don't really know what the phenotypes are. And so in both those cases, you, that starting from not knowing, and even in a certain sense, well, not even, ideally not even having a preconception, uh, is a powerful place to be in, in biology.